Let's try another exercise. Let's implement a Enable button that takes a GUI and a string and gives us back a GUI that's just like that, except the button whose name matches the string is, becomes enabled if it was disabled. So a lot of this, because Enable button also works on GUI, a lot of our design recipe steps are the same. We would end up with the same result of the uh, representation. Um, we would end up with a very similar template, just saying Enable button instead of Read Screen. Uh, I've got GUI down here stashed as useful for examples, uh, but the part that is different, if we follow the design recipe through, is writing examples. So let's try that now. So we would need to test Enable button and then we give it a GUI. So we can pick the simplest kind of GUI. Um, right? Enable button takes a GUI argument we get to pick. We can pick the label case. Pick a fruit. Um, and then what does enable button pick do with this label? Actually, we have an issue here. Enable button, according to the problem statement, takes a GUI and a string. And we're supposed to enable the button whose string matches. So what if we try to enable the OK button in that GUI? If we try to enable the OK button in this GUI, then there's no OK button, so it should be the same GUI still. So we expect to get back the same thing here. So already we see a problem. I had leftover, had a leftover list of strings here because I just copied my old template. But actually enable GUI returns a GUI, and also enable GUI takes a string, takes a string for the name of the button that we want to enable. Okay, so I think we should all agree on this test. It says that when you enable a GUI that just has pick a fruit, if you enable the OK button in that GUI, you haven't changed the GUI at all. Let's try another example. Enable button. We know we need another example, partly because we haven't done anything yet, but also because we haven't tried the second case here. Let's have a button named OK that is disabled. If we enable the OK button in that GUI, ah, this is where we're doing something. So we have a button whose names match, whose name matches, we should produce uh, a button where it still has that name, but now it's enabled. We could pause for a moment here and observe, before we move on to the next case, we might be interested in what if a button is already enabled? Well, nothing should happen. Uh, what if the button that's in the GUI has a different name? In that case, we don't want to enable it. So we happen to notice these variants, uh, these interesting cases for enable button as we were on the button variant. But that doesn't mean we should stop here. We should keep going through our different choices of GUI and make test cases for choice horizontal and vertical. If we make uh, enable button in a choice that is um, good and bad, where good is selected, and we're trying to enable the button named OK. This is another one of those cases where nothing happens. We just want to return the same choice. How about when we enable button on a vertical panel that has, um, that has a label that just says hello, and then has a button named OK that is currently disabled, and we want to enable the OK button. So we've got a GUI that has hello stacked above the button OK. We want to enable the OK button, so we want a GUI to come back that's just like that one, except that the OK button is enabled. And the vertical kind of test, or the horizontal kind of test, is going to be very similar. Let's say we have an OK button that's not enabled, next to a cancel button that is enabled, and are trying to enable the OK button. Then we want a GUI very much like that one, but with the OK button enabled. So we have an, a minimal number of tests here. We've covered all the cases. We've even looked at some interesting variants of the button here. And that means we're ready to move on to the template step in principle. Is our template here? Basically, yes, but we changed something. Not only did we change the number, but we also added an extra argument to enable button. And that means these recursive calls can't be right. It also means that we have this extra name to use in each case. So I'm just going to list the name everywhere because we have that possibility to use. Uh, 
but also we need to pass some string along to enable button. Now we don't know what string, but there is a good chance for lots of programs that that should just be the same name. In other words, there's a chance that name is along for the ride. It doesn't actually change through different calls in the way that the GUI does that we're looking for, and that's why we call it along for the ride. So here is a, a template for a function that takes a GUI and a name, um, a GUI and a string rather, where the string is along for the ride. And now we can take these, uh, this template and these examples and figure out what the solution should be. If we, uh, we have a label with pick a fruit and we're trying to enable OK, actually we didn't have to do anything, we just had to return the same label. So we could make this label T, right, since pick a fruit corresponds to T and what we wanted is label pick a fruit, or more simply we could just return the GUI that we're, we're given, G. How about in the button case? In the button TE here, here we have a button, T corresponds to OK, enabled is false. In this case it did matter, this name was interesting. We wanted to compare this name to that label T. So let's put a comparison here. We want, some, we want to do two different things depending on whether name and T are equal. Actually I'll use string equal just to be clear, it's a string comparison. So now I have used name, maybe I don't need it anymore. What is the result if the names are equal? Then I want a button just like the old button, except the, it's enabled. So I want button name true. And what if they're not the same, like in this other case here? OK and cancel don't match up, so we don't want to change the enabled state. So we could say button TE, or again, we could just go G to return the old GUI. What if, uh, what if the button is already enabled, like we saw here? The names match, and it's already enabled. Well, then it was still OK to return that it's enabled. That takes care of the button case, at least matching our test cases. Let's look at choice. Uh, in choice, it's one of those things where we don't really do anything. So the template gave us all these pieces, but really we just wanted to return G. How about the vertical case? In the vertical case, we have to do something. We're not just returning G, because what happened was that this final button changed. So how do we reach inside of a vertical combination and change the right button? Well, the template gives us an idea of how to do that. We look at what it says. It says, try enable button on T name. So this is T, and when we do enable button on that, we're going to get back this result, as it turns out. We get back just hello. And when we do enable button B with name, this is B, and when we do enable button, it's going to give us exactly that. So in fact, these look like the right pieces, and we just want to put them together with vertical. So if we read this back, what it says is, if you've got a vertical GUI, the way you enable all the buttons that match name is you enable the ones in the top, and you enable the ones in the bottom, and put them back together again. And of course, horizontal is going to be exactly the same. Horizontal combination of enable the buttons recursively. Okay. And we can run this program, and let's see, all of our tests pass, okay? Which is not too surprising because we followed the recipe. We call this kind of example where you have basically a function that follows the template for a GUI, but there's extra one or more arguments that are just along for the ride.